Hey guys, welcome back to What's Up Whenever. Anyways, what's going on here, guys? I know a lot of you are new subscribers to the channel. The channel's been getting a lot of new subscribers lately due to my little collaboration with Alex Steele. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of info on how this channel works. So typically I'm doing projects in the shop, building furniture and making those awesome videos that most people um, come to this channel to see. Uh, but there's also a lot that goes on in this channel kind of behind the scenes and hey, I'm just an average guy, you know, I'm working on my house and doing all sorts of renovations and trying to fix up the place as well. So I just want to let you know that these videos, these what's up, uh, what's up whenever videos are kind of like a vlog style videos, just documenting the process of me renovating my house and fixing up my workshop, redoing the siding. See, I'm trying to finish off a deck here. I got these handrail posts up and I just got to build the picket sections, but I've also started a huge renovation on my house as well, rebuilding that deck and doing the siding and adding a staircase. And then I was like, hey, we got a deck here. Might as well bump out the dining room and add a dining room addition and windows. And it's just one thing after another. So for those of you who are doing renovations and work on your house and you wanted to kind of a different perspective of how things are done, here in Canada anyways. Um, I invite you to follow along the channel. I'm gonna try and document as many uh, steps of the process and building this deck, doing the form work. I've already got a couple videos on forming and pouring the concrete. And we're just getting into framing up a timber frame beam that's gonna support this 42 foot long by 14 foot deep deck. It's gonna be humongous, it's gonna be Huge. So if this stuff interests you, then I want I invite you to stick around. But I know a lot of you guys are just here for the woodworking and the carving and the furniture and joinery and that sort of stuff. So these videos might not appeal to you. I understand. Just wanted to give you a heads up, okay? Here's what we got going on so far. I just finished getting the posts planed up and I'm gonna drill some center holes in the bottom of those posts and then stand them all up here. Now, ideally, if all this concrete had gone perfectly according to plan, everything would be completely level with itself. But I just shot these with the builder's level and uh, this one, like we saw in the video, floated up at least an inch. That one stayed where it should have been and then the other two kind of floated up between a you know a quarter and a half an inch as well. So basically all four of these, none of them are in line or level with each other. So I'm gonna have to drill the holes for these um, rods, three quarter inch hot dip galvanized all thread rods. I'm gonna leave them sticking up about eight inches and I'm gonna epoxy them in with this uh, Sika Sika anchor fix made by Sikaflex. It's like a two-part epoxy that sets up real quick. So I'm gonna drill my holes at seven eighths of an inch. My hammer drill here. That leaves a little extra space for the epoxy to get in around the threads and really anchor that thread into the hole. So you always wanna drill your hole an eighth of an inch bigger than your actual rod. And once I got all the whole, all the rods in place, I'm gonna set my posts up and I'm gonna have to temporarily brace them plumb and then use a stick, shoot the builder's level from the bottom of the ledger board there and then transfer that over to my, get my post height so that I have a perfect level tops to all my posts. So when I lay my beam on there, you know, there's no wonkiness going on. So it's a bit more labor intensive, but I've got to make sure that that beam sits perfect because, because it's a timber frame beam. All the joinery and everything's exposed. There's no cladding going over top of it. So there's really no room for error. It's finished when it's in. So it's got to be perfect.
basically I'm just using my angle grinder with a zip cut disc to cut these 19 inch bars that go about 9 inches down into the concrete and then they'll stick up about 10 inches as you can see right here. Now I had to angle some of these holes because I was actually hitting the rebar. What are the chances, you know? We just threw wet pieces of, we doweled in the wet rebar while the concrete was being poured. A lot of people were asking me, is there rebar in your concrete forms? Of course there's rebar in my forms. Do you think I am an idiot? No, there's a, fr there's a frame, a two foot grid in the, in the footing, and then there's two dowels of rebar going through here. So I hit those in these two, when I was drilling out these two holes here, so I had to angle my drill a bit to get past them, which is fine. Once I epoxy them in, I can just hit them with a wood mallet just to plumb them up a little bit. They'll just bend, no big deal. So I just gotta cut a couple more sets of these. You wanna make sure that you cut all your, all your pieces and you fit them, dry fit them in the holes before you open up your tube of epoxy and start gluing them in because that epoxy, once it goes off, you're done. That nozzle's a one-time use nozzle, so you wanna make sure all your rods are ready to go all at the same time so you can just goop up each hole, dowel in, squeeze out that epoxy, and then be done with it because as soon as you got about 20 minutes to get all your rods in and then that nozzle's gonna gonna lock up on you because that glue set or the epoxy sets so quick. All right, so once you pull that plug out, you're pretty much good to go. You just gotta screw this sucker on here. Put that in your caulking gun, and then you want to make sure before you start squirting that out. Because once the two parts of the epoxy mix in here, then you only got about 20 minutes before that thing hardens up. You want to make sure that your hole... Make a little wire brush for this, but I don't have one, so best I can do is my air chuck right now. I find that turning the threads kind of forces the epoxy down because it follows the threads, so the threads kind of screw the epoxy down to the bottom. Let's see if you need any more. You just add a little bit right there. Just keep sucking her down.
All right, so as you can see, I have made a pretty large mess of my shop here, but we got all the posts cut except for two. So, so we don't have all the posts cut. We have six of the posts cut, got two more to go. I had to send two of them back just because there were some really ugly knots in them and the rest of the posts were kind of all really nice. And so I was like, ah, I can't have two of these posts looking terrible and six of them looking awesome. So I got two new ones here, fresh cut, and they're looking pretty clear. So I'm gonna plane those up. We gotta shoot a, shoot a height on them and then do the joinery. These are getting stained up tomorrow morning. Then we can start uh, just cutting the little spacer blocks with the through tenons uh, to get these pairs of posts to put together, installed once the stain is dry. And then we're, tomorrow I'm going to be starting on the beams and doing the Japanese scarf joints, okay? So you do not want to miss that part. It's going to be super fun cutting some Japanese style scarf joints as well as other joinery on those beams, getting them all spliced together and ready to install. That's all you get for this video. Stay tuned for the next one, guys. Until then, Samurai Oak.